Hi, Jared Hoyman with VisibleTour.com and welcome to this quick tutorial on how I edit uh, video walkthroughs. So this is actually a pretty small house and uh, just a little bit of drone footage, not a whole lot, and then the GH5. So I use the GH5 for the interior and the Mavic 2 Pro for the exterior, all in 4K. Um, the one thing to note is that it is 30 frames per second for the DJI Mavic 2 Pro, and it is 60 frames per second with the GH5. So my advice is always do the common lowest denominator, which is gonna be the 30 frames per second. So our ultimate output will be 30 frames per second, um, which is great because then I can slow the GH5 footage down by 50%. So let's get started here. I am going to pull in the first footage um, and I'm not sure how much more of this, uh, the DJI I'm actually going to use because a lot of it was done, um, with the GH5 and not the DJI. Let's see here. So let's start here. And actually, there's like a little bit of footage here. Let's grab this. And I like to pull this all the way up. And that way you can see it a little bit better. And then I go to where I start to move. Right there. And I'm gonna shrink that up. And the sound, or I should say song, uh, that I am using, I'm gonna go bring that over here. All right, we'll pull the song here. And a nice space bar. There we go. And it's a little choppy. So I'm actually gonna pull it up. I listened to this song already. So I'm gonna pull it up here. All right, let's back up. Things get a little exciting, right? That music. All right, let's go here. I'm gonna cut it, take that out, bring it here. Do something like that. And I like to look at where the wave is um, and where the beats are gonna be. So I try to keep something going. Space bar. In the intro, I like, you know, the intro is always coming in, looking at the property. In most cases, my edits are gonna be a drone shot from up above. This is a neighborhood with a lot of trees. It was hard to see uh, the house, so I started right away right here. Um, so this is our intro. So I'd say about five seconds. Okay, we'll bring it right about there. That'll be the intro. Then we'll go grab probably another shot coming in. And this is of the GH5. Now, when you're doing handheld, First of all, let's delete the audio of it. Uh, when you're doing handheld using a gimbal, you're still not gonna have a perfect movement. Um, there's still gonna be some jitters. So what I do, let's scrub a little bit forward here where we start getting some good movement. Bring it right there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, all right, I like to slow it down. This is what it looks like normal, which isn't bad, but it's not perfect. So we are gonna go into the clip speed right here and you can get there multiple ways. You can right click and then go to speed. Um, I have it on a macro with my mouse, so I just hit the scroll wheel and then it goes right to it. And then we're gonna do 50% and now it's gonna be 50 percent speed so if i hit the space bar and then i also like to take the clip and then let's go to time remapping hit speed and that way this is where you're kind of listening for it all right 
So I think right about right there, we're going to hit, there we go, this keystroke. So if you go right here and you hit the keystroke, that's the beginning of it. And it's honestly but a second. So if we scrub forward to about there, and then we'll hit the keystroke again. Then if you grab this, you can pull it up. And if you hit the space bar. There, now there's a beat right there, so we'll shrink this down. Now. All right, right there's the beat. So then I'm gonna cut it. And I won't need any more of this clip here. And then we will go into, I kinda wanna show off the front porch immediately, so let's do that. Also done on the GH5, so anytime I use the GH5, I go in and I grab the speed and it's gonna be 50%. So made it to 50%. And obviously the beginning of my recording is always a little jittery, so I like to go forward a little bit. There we go. So I think we don't need to see the door. Let's go right there. Shrink that up, bring it over. I like to see how it kind of flows. All right, maybe cut it there and then in a shot, maybe that will be the next one. And the whole trick of doing a video walkthrough is just to highlight the best parts of it to kind of give an outline of what that home looks like, but don't give away the farm, right? And I did not like that transition. Actually, there's more of a beat there. Okay, and there's gonna be a beat coming up right about there. Cut that, we'll go to the backyard. So I had some shots back here. By the way, there was a dog while I was shooting this and you always have to uh, <laughs> kind of ignore the stuff that's not gonna sell a home. Again, did I mention this is a small home, so. So why did I do a video walkthrough of such a small home? Why would this agent want this video walkthrough? Well, that's a good question. We live in the age of Corona. <laughs> and in the age of Corona, not everybody wants to walk into a home. They wanna go in virtually and see, well, is this something I actually wanna spend time in? And even outside of the age of Corona, that's exactly what you're gonna to wanna to do because marketing is marketing. It's all about enticing and using that emotional feed of getting somebody in. And you just wanna feed on those heartstrings and get them excited to see this property. Okay, so we are putting it at 50%. Okay, so you might've heard that noise it was kind of a whoosh right there. I like hearing that and I don't like to add anything that's not part of the music already. So that kind of gives me the idea of what can I do that or what can I do there? So let's right click on the FX. Let's go to speed. Let's go find that spot again. Okay. It starts about here. So right about there we will keystroke that, and then we'll see what it looks like if I go boom, uh, boom. Actually, it could be so subtle too. Let's do that. Sometimes these work out well, sometimes they don't. Let's take a look. Okay, I think a little bit faster. We'll shrink the timeline and we'll pull it up a little bit more, maybe to like 
500. There we go, that looked good. And if it's too abrupt, you can always go and kind of give it a ramp and then pull this to ramp it up. So let's um, shrink it down a little bit more so you can see, see what I'm talking about. So you've got this, oh great. Let's click there, there we go. So I'm having horrible, horrible luck with this. Okay, well anyways, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> there's this little ramp right there and I kind of like to have it at a slant. So let's see what that looks like. There's that dog. I don't want to see that dog. So you know what? I'm going to get rid of it and there's going to be no more. Okay, right there's a beat. We're going to take that delete this. We're going to start moving inside of the home. And so the next shot is, let's see, what other shots do I have here? Okay, we're going to take this drone shot and we're going to do something like right there because now we know this is the next shot we'll do is starting inside the house but we'll give it a little video clip transition okay there's a beat right there so cut i don't like to do fade ins fade outs you know all these kind of um cliche of transitions i just like to work on beats and just do hard cuts uh, so the next thing we're going to do is we're walking right into the house. Uh, usually the homeowners, I have them out of the house or on a different floor. Uh, this one was a little bit harder because they're trying to move stuff. So we did uh, uh, a few hard cuts. And so this first one was the living room. And we'll have to cut a lot on here. So, okay, this is where we started inside the home. Okay, so we'll go there. Now, if we did regular speed, um, I don't walk that slow. So here, I'll just show you what it looks like with regular speed. You know, and it's okay. You know, it's fine. I like it a little slower. So we're gonna do the 50% speed. I'm also gonna right click on the FX, go to time remapping speed, because there's gonna be a lot of uh, speed ramping that I'm gonna do again inside to kind of move along and have a nice flow. So here we go. Okay, um, I think what I'm going to do here is keystroke there, and this is what it would look like if we did a boom. Okay, and put a keystroke there, speed it up, and let's look at the timeline and see what that looks like. All right. I like to keep these under a minute if I can, if it's a large house, which I may post one of my large houses that I did. That one is probably reaching about a minute and a half to two minutes. Um, but the attention span of the typical person is about 30 seconds. So you want to get them really into it early on in the video. Uh, okay. The next shot I'm going to do is showing this perspective. So we'll start right about there. Okay, so there's that sound, but I don't know if that's a good spot to do. Okay, so this is, we're gonna try something here. Watch this. Okay, so 
So I'm actually going to do, so starting right about, okay, we're gonna cut it because this actually doesn't flow very well if you do that because it moves over to the left and then I'm moving forward. But if we start about there, let me make sure what the rest of the clip looks like. Okay, that's not bad. So we're gonna start right about there. Then I'm going to go scrub forward to about there. And I am going to hit a keystroke. I'm gonna bring this all the way up. Okay, let's make this faster, I'm guessing about there. Yep, works pretty good. And there's a beat right there, so we'll cut it there. So to give you an idea of how that flows, we'll start right here, walking in. Sometimes the buffer isn't the best, you know, when you're working on the timeline. Even if you have a 2080 RTX, it's not always the fastest. It's never the best. Okay, so now I wanna do, <clears throat> kind of show a different perspective there. So this kind of comes down. So we're gonna cut right about here. here we only need a few seconds people just need to get enough to want more and the next clip because that's where I had to cut is gonna be going into the kitchen I believe so I'll we'll grab that all right so we're going into the kitchen Uh, the cool thing about transitions into other rooms, I really like, if you look to the left and right in this clip, you can see the doorway. And it's kind of neat because you see that perspective of coming in and walking in, and it looks good. So we're going to do that. We're going to put it at 50% speed. Okay. It's on a beat, so... You kind of listen for the beats and then I'll cut it right away. And I use my mouse to cut it. Um, I use my um, my Logitech, what is it? The MX Master S2 or the 2S. And, um, and I just macro each button. So one's to cut it, one's to shrink the speed. Um, let's see here, we'll go right there, showing this part. Again, small house, but the purpose is not to pick always the best house or for an agent you don't want the best house to be always the video you want every house you want to be consistent and you want to market it the best you can so that's how you do it okay so there's that sound again i don't know if that's a good spot to yeah let's see if i go All right, so we're going into this space. So let's listen more. All right, we'll cut it there and we'll move, scrub forward to the first room. people have an idea of how big that space is going to be and then we're going to move into this room we don't need to show the whole transition so we'll kind of start there into the doorway bring it over cut it you only need a few seconds for each transition uh, wow, did I blow that out? 
There we go. <laughs> I adjusted the aperture. Okay, so now we're gonna come in to this room. The other thing is I set it all at the same white balance, so then it's easy to adjust white balance as we edit the, um, the clip after. <laughs> Here, so I adjusted the aperture and none of these rooms are that big but I use the equivalent of a 15 millimeter lens so it is ultra wide so it does look a lot bigger than it is all right there's a nice beat there okay we'll adjust there's the homeowners okay what I like about this shot here is, first of all, on the left, you can tell that there is a you know built-in cabinet there. The kitchen is to the right, um, and then the hall straight down. So it kind of gives you an idea of that layout without giving everything away. Again, if this video, people make these videos into like three, four minute videos, showing every single movement, it is so boring. And when this is on social media, it is gonna bore you so much. You just wanna be in and out of that house and be like, cool, that was awesome, I liked it, maybe I wanna look at it. Or maybe I have a buyer, if I'm a real estate agent, that would be interested in looking at this. So you, you want them in and out pretty quick. All right, so we're gonna start right here. And again, this is probably one of the smaller houses I've done recently. <laughs> So, maybe we wanna give it a little bit more time in here. Okay, there's a beat there. I either wanna cut it or I wanna do some kind of speed with it. So let's just do the keystroke there, move forward, see how smooth I wasn't. <laughs> we'll make it look like it was smooth. Okay, and then we'd stop it right about, maybe right about there. So we'll put another keystroke there. So now you got a keystroke here, keystroke there. We will lift her up, speed that up. Uh, it's at about 5,000. Let's see what that looks like. And obviously it's not rendered out, so it's not gonna be the smoothest, but let's go a little bit, maybe 10,000. Okay actually timed out pretty good because right at that whoosh, we're going to go right out of here okay and let's go right on that beat right there so you can see the uh the peak so we'll cut that and then we will grab one of these exterior clips because you kind of want to show that we are leaving. Okay. And do we want to grab one of these? I'm kind of just scrubbing through to see what those look like. Um, and then there is this one. So let's grab the DJI drone footage. So we'll do this, kind of showing there. And I do want to show off that it is a two-stall garage. I could have done that in the beginning. Okay. And we will grab that drone footage. And in hindsight, I probably would have done maybe kind of a city shot. Uh, let's grab. And this is... I'm gonna go 50% since it is the GH5. All right. Okay. So let's go right. I'm trying to avoid some of the stuff. Um, nobody needs to see that truck. But then we also wanna see. All right, we'll go right there. It's gonna be a really quick clip anyways. Okay, beat there. That was as quick as that's going to be. And then we'll kind of come back to that first shot I did. Okay, we did that. 
Panasonic. Okay, let's go back to this one and this will be kind of the end shot. Actually, so I do zoom in a little bit. So if we do this, I'm going to reverse the clip. So if you hit reverse, and we'll go right there. Now it doesn't work well when there's cars going by or people, or, or at that fact, squirrels or animals. But now it's kind of, it's going away from the, uh, uh, the house at that point. So it looks like it's going away instead of in. So it's kind of like that end. Uh, let's make sure I'm at a good beat though. Okay, cut it right there. Okay, so that is the cutting and placement of it. So what do we do next? Uh, there's a couple things before we are all finished. I like to save as often as I can because I've had these things crash on me. So color correcting is the first thing. And I don't like to do a whole lot. I used to shoot in log all the time and that was just way too much work. So I need to shoot these out quickly and get them over to clients within a day or two at the latest. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to, well, we are there already, color. And I like to bring the contrast up a little bit. So we'll bring it up there to 25. Uh, I just feel it out by the look. Um, I don't use scopes. I used to use scopes mostly when I did log, but now it's gonna be more of a visual looking. Uh, and then shadows, uh, maybe a little bit up and bring the darks down and saturation up just a tad. I don't like to oversaturate, maybe like to 107%. Uh, and then creative, I do like to sharpen it um, around five-ish. Uh, bring up the vibrance. You can tell when it's way too vibrate, vibrant, vibrant, <laughs> whatever that term is. Uh, okay, we'll bring it right about 16-ish. And that's all I really do on it. Let's shrink down the timeline so we can see more. Okay. Then I go over to the Lumetri color. That's all of what we did here, shows here. I like to right click, copy, anything of that same clip or that same uh, footage. Um, now this is actually gonna be a little bit different because it's the Panasonic, but let's go back to the drone footage, so that's consistent. So we're gonna go here. I control V for paste. Uh, we're gonna go up here. This obviously needs, the shadows need to be brought up more. Um, otherwise it looks pretty good. Shot there. Um, I am gonna grab this and we'll control V that same thing. It actually turned out pretty well. Um, how close is it? Um, yeah, footage is actually pretty good. So shadows, we can actually probably bring down a little bit. And then highlights, a little bit there. And then we'll bring the shadow up. And obviously not rendered out, but okay. Um, we'll go here and control V. It was very subtle. Maybe contrast a little more. Whites. Oh, there. All right, so that was actually a good one. So we're gonna take that clip that I just edited, copy it, bring it over to this one. Control V. Uh, control V. See how that looks? Uh, it could be a little bit brighter. So we'll bring up the highlights and even the whites. You can see some detail. In log, you can see more, but it's just honestly way too much time for this. If this was like a big project, yes, but I'm doing, you know, two to three videos a day, so I don't have time to work on everything. People want the turnover because it needs to be listed immediately. Okay. Boom. And the nice thing about doing the speed ramp right inside is that once you've color corrected this one, you don't have to color correct the other side of the ramp, so it's all good. Uh, the other option is cutting it, speeding up the clip, and then cutting it again, too much time. 
Okay, and then we're there, we already color corrected that one. And then the inside, I don't do a lot for color correcting. Um, I will do a lot of more for the white balancing if that's off. So in this case, um, let's go bring up uh, the contrast, uh, maybe shadows a little bit, bring blacks down just a tad. You don't have to do a lot because it's already an ingrained uh, color profile that I'm using. Uh, the other thing is if you're not sure about the white balance, if it doesn't look that great, most houses have some white trim or something white in it. So I grab the white balance selector, I look around. Um, this is pretty white, let's see what that looks like. It was very subtle, uh, 2.4 and 3.7. Um, and you can always adjust it then based on that. Uh, you can go colder and actually Personally, I do like that kind of colder look there. So I brought it down and everything does actually look pretty good there because it really doesn't matter if you keep clicking this on a white, it doesn't work perfectly all the time. So it's a nice base. And then I go, let's right click, copy, and I'm going to select all the rest of the interior clips. Control V, and then let's go through it. All right, okay, that's okay. I'm okay with that. All right, so the thing is with this shot and this shot, it's very overblown and I'm never gonna get it perfect. And unless you spend hours in a house, you aren't either. So we're going to take the white. All right, so now you get a little bit more detail back and even the highlights. And uh, we'll keep the there. And then maybe even shadow a little bit down because once we get in here, okay. So now I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna go over to the next shot, which is the same spot almost. We're gonna delete that. We're gonna paste the other one so that is the difference if we get the fx that was the difference there's a little bit more detail and the white balance is good enough for me okay blown out because i copied and pasted before everything so we're going to go and copy this we're going to go back and delete and then paste all right, and this looks okay to me. And this pretty yellow, I mean, this was the room, it was pretty yellowy, but let's see what we can do with the white balance. I like it, not as yellowy. So we're gonna do this, the selector. Let's look at, this is a white door. If we click here, there. Brought it more white and it doesn't look horrible. It doesn't look too blue. Um, and if it does look blue up here, it's because this was a blue light type uh, kind of luminance. Didn't look that great. Okay, very blue, but the walls are blue. So let's see what this looks like if I take the uh, white balance selector and grab this white door. Ooh, that's pretty bad. See, that just shows it's not a perfect solution. That's better. So I click the outside of it, that looks more, you can always adjust. And it'll go there. So that's the, that's the difference. It's not a whole lot different than what I had uh, eventual, originally. Okay, so this one I knew was gonna be a problem, totally overblown. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in there. Um, let's white, see if we can white balance this. All right, and then I am going to bring, it's probably gonna be the whites. Let's bring a little bit more detail there. Uh, let's bring in the contrast. And then, see it's too dull, but. Okay, so this is before and after. Before, after um brought down there's a little bit more green there so 
good enough for me. And again, this could use some tweaking. So we will bring the whites down there for a little bit more detail. Uh, highlights, we still want it a little bright there. And then up the contrast. And you can always do a little bit more blacks. So bring down those a little bit. Uh, so again, after, before, after, before. Let's see what white balance would do anything. Yeah, did not look good. Um, and I want to cool it off a little bit. All right, looks good. All right, now for one of the last scenes here. Definitely needs to be white balanced. Um, it's kind of hard because this is different lighting than in here, but let's see what this does if I go right there. I like it. Obviously too blue in here, but we're only gonna see it for a little bit. This looks a lot cleaner. Um, let's open up the shadows a little more. And yeah, I'm actually okay with that. <laughs> this is the end so maybe we need to ah that was bad <laughs> let's see what it looks like starting there okay what was the before before after okay that looks better so sometimes you have to go to this end product to color correct in order to see what the flow is going to look like so that works um I think we still need to color correct this. Copy over there, grab this, paste. Um, we need to bring shadows up. Okay. And real quick, instead of copy and pasting, we will do contrast, uh, bring highlights down, uh, whites. There, we need more detail. So then actually highlights can come up a little bit. Saturation definitely needs to come up. It's, and let's go to sharpness, five-ish, vibrance. And here, where are we at right there? Let's grab, copy, there. and we will paste on this last one. Okay, and then one of the final things I like to do is I create an adjustment layer. And I grab that adjustment layer, I put it right up here. I bring it to the beginning, to the end, and then usually in the beginning, um, I start it right away. Uh, we will go to effects, I will type in crop. I will drag the crop over. I will um, hit the little watch. I, that's what I think it is, like a stopwatch. Uh, it's a keystroke of the top and the bottom. Then I will hit the space bar. I kind of feel it out. It's for the first clip. And right before the first clip is over, then I put about 10% of a crop down. And that gives that kind of cinematic, um, anamorphic look. And that way you can actually put logos, you can put addresses, you can put stuff right in the bars then, um, and then it's not in the way for advertising of showing the, uh, the final image there. So the other thing I will do then is I will grab uh, a graphic to show the address. In this case, I tend to use this one. And we'll grab the address up over here. Eight sixty six Howard Street, Green Bay, Wisconsin. I'll use that line. We'll go to bar. 
Um, and this is where you can play around with colors and stuff. Uh, let's just do that and see what that looks like. So, okay, so obviously white on white, you can't really see it very well. So let's, um, let's try that red. The tracking, I like to take it down and then bring up the size. And then same thing, I like to bring actually the size down of the city, but have the city a little bit bigger. Um, let's change that to, I don't know, I'm just getting an 80s creative here. So let's see what the colors could look like. Um, I wonder what green looks like. If I do like a weird funky green bay, green for green bay. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that's gonna work out. <laughs> Let's try. That little blue. And the other thing I'm probably gonna end up doing here, let's copy this, cause then I like to have it as a sandwich. It's in the beginning and I put it at the end. So here at the beginning, I am going to probably move this somewhere. So I might actually just put it here. Let's see what that looks like. still can't read it very well. Uh, if in doubt, I do dark or like a charcoal. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. I'm going to do it. I'm going to replace it. Let's put it right. Actually, I want to make sure I have, let's cancel that. Let's make sure they're the same. So then I'll grab the color profile number. Paste it. Paste it. Okay, so nice and dark. Um, let's move it where there'd be a good contrast then. And I wanna see where that final, uh, okay, we're gonna have to have it come down. We don't want it that close to the bar. And the other thing you could do if, you know, I usually do it when I'm flying high in the sky, uh, but what we could do is we can put something in the background too. So let's try doing that. Let's put a, um, do, do, do color mat. Uh, maybe like, a, <clears throat> let's do like a white, whitish, pinkish. And I'm going to move this up, <clears throat> excuse me, and we are going to grab this and we're going to put it down here and then we are going to have to crop it. So let's go right over here to effects, crop, and then this is where we're going to Make sure we can and then transparency I don't do this that often so where do we go opacity that's where we go okay so let's make it a little give it some opacity there okay so this is kind of what it obviously doesn't work out well because it's already there and then this comes in. So we're gonna wanna do a, uh, let's get rid of that. We wanna go into a video transition. So we'll put it there. there. And I'm not even sure I like that color. So let's see what, yeah, a little bit darker. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, and I might actually shrink everything. Let's see if I shrink it by, oh, it goes in that direction. Let's go back to 100%. 
or just type 100% in. Okay, we do not need those to be overlapping in that clip. So here we go, it'll end right here. Cinematic bars give it that kind of focus right there in the center. And then if we go to the end here. And it doesn't need to be long. So then we'll just do a fade out in audio and a fade out in video. So that pretty much concludes everything. And here's the end product. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, if you have other ways that you do it that are quicker, um, obviously I'm talking and doing this at the same time. I usually knock these out in about 20, 30 minutes. Um, so this one probably went a lot longer. So hope you have a wonderful day. Please subscribe, visibletour.com. Have a great day.